This is Take Back Our Power with host Joy Bina. Information that supports community health. Information empowering you with personal health. Take back our power. And now, here's Joy. The legendary activist Dolores Huerta co-founded the United Farm Workers of America with Cesar Chavez. She was a veteran of labor civil rights, immigrant rights, and the feminist movement. Dolores Huerta was instrumental in passing the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Bill which resulted in the legalization of 1.3 million farm workers as part of the Reform Act of 1986, as well as many additional pieces of legislation, including getting the ballot in the Spanish language and taking away citizen requirements so people can get public assistance. Now, Dolores has founded her own organization, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, supporting her continued work and bringing movements together in order to accomplish the progressive agenda. Welcome to Take Back Our Power. I'm Joy Bina, and this evening we are privileged to celebrate the life of Dolores Huerta and support her as she passes the torch to the younger generation. Come with me as we go to Inner Light Ministries for this landmark event. Here we are at Inner Light, and we're going to find out what has drawn people to come tonight to see Dolores Huerta. I'm here because of two experiences. The one was a direct experience with her this summer when I went to His Holiness Dalai Lama's birthday celebration in Southern California. And she was one of his presentees with him and on stage. And because she was a little bit older than him, he invited her next to him. And when it was her turn to speak, she got everyone, thousands of us, up on our feet saying, I am powerful. She electrified us all. Um, how could I not come out for Dolores? I mean, um, you know, my activism started because of the United Farm Workers when I was a teenager, all the way in Missouri. People were there organizing locally, and, you know, we, that was my first, you know, time out demonstrating, and it was, it was really touched me and there was nuns and priests out there with us. It was just a really good experience and just kind of got the bug of being an activist. All right, okay, first, there are many female leaders, but they are not recognized. And she is one of the very few that, you know, that people actually know of, that they know her name. And, and she's done a lot of things that, that have helped and contributed to, to a lot of different communities. Um, personally, as, as, a, as a young Chicana, she inspires me to, to continue my higher education so that I can, you know, um, so that I can further um, further the struggles that she is doing. You know, I think that, that this event specifically is very important because it is about passing the baton to the younger generations. He's crying. He hasn't, he's worked with her for 25 years oh, yeah. and he's just seeing her for the first time. And, ¿Hace cuánto tiempo lo viste? Ahorita? No, no, pero antes de esto. Oh, desde el 93. He hasn't, he hasn't seen her since 1993. He worked 25 years with her. Please welcome Dolores Huerta. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the mayor of Santa Cruz uh, for declaring Dance with Dolores Day. Woo! <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I want to thank all of you for being here. First of all, let's give an applause uh, to all of the organizers of uh, this wonderful event today. It was really great. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, I, I think when I, I see all of you here, and I, I know that everything that I'm going to say is going to be like preaching to the choir, right? Yeah, Reverend Deeds, right? From, from, your, from your podium here, uh, from your place here. And uh, it's to kind of celebrate, I think we can call this like a celebration of many things of all of us here uh, in this uh, auditorium that we have worked on together uh, in the past and the victories that we have been able to accomplish. Uh, and uh, before I go there, though, I do want to just uh, kind of recognize, I know we uh, talked about my work with the United Farm Workers, and there are many people here in the audience uh, that, uh, actually some people who worked for the union, you know, and then other people who supported the United Farm Workers. And uh, without those of you who volunteered to work and those of you who volunteered as, as, as supporters, uh, this is, of course, what was able to bring some justice uh, to the farm workers in this area. So first of all, I'm going to just ask the people that work for the union uh, to uh, please stand up so we can acknowledge them, because these were people who were volunteers. They didn't get paid, remember. La gente que trabajó con la unión, si se pueden poner a pie. And uh, muchas gracias. So you know, I don't know how we got away with it because all of these wonderful people worked for the organization without any wages. How about that? Okay. I mean, people got you know the their subsistence, but they really didn't get salaries uh, when they worked for uh, for the organization. But uh, it was you know by that token, many many people kind of gave up their lives for many years, uh, like. Uh, uh, Tatanka did, you know, like he did here with us and many other people. And then I know that many of you uh, were out there and you uh, were maybe uh, picketing in front of stores, asking people not to buy grapes, lettuce, gallo wine, etc., or maybe some of the boycotts that we had, and uh, we uh, also make it, made it possible for the farm workers to have the basic human rights that other workers have. So could all of the supporters of the boycotts please stand? Todos los que apoyaron los boicoteos. <laughs> So I think we can also say that this is what a movement looks like, right? This, this is what a movement looks like. And uh, you were seeing, uh, the, I just want to make a few comments about uh, the films that we saw. And uh, this is a celebration, so I'm not going to give a whole big lecture. At least I will try not to. I'll try not to get carried away. But uh, in the, what you saw there, uh, uh, where when I left the United Farm Workers in 2002, uh, I decided to go back to uh, what we had first started way back in the 50s when I first got involved in organizing, uh, to go back to uh, community grassroots organizing. You know, this thing that, uh, when I, and I want to mention this name, and I know many of you in this audience will know his name, because usually when I ask people, How, have you ever heard of this man, Maybe nobody in the audience will raise their hand. Maybe one or two people will raise their hand. And well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention his name, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how many people know this man. Okay, besides the people that work for the union, okay? You guys don't raise your hands, okay? Okay, how many people in this audience here know the name Fred Ross Sr.? All right, Fred Ross Sr., okay. I'm surprised, I thought there would be more hands, okay? And the reason, that people don't know his name is because he was such a great organizer. He was such a great organizer because he's the one that got Sister Chavez involved in organizing. He's the one that got myself, uh, got me uh, involved in organizing and many, many other leaders uh, throughout the United States of America. And the ones that he didn't uh, recruit, he, many other people he trained. And that is, of course, the mark of a good organizer, because it is to develop and develop other people so that they can be leaders, right? Uh, this is what it's all about. It's not about one uh, taking, although I'm getting the limelight tonight, it's not what it's supposed to be about, okay? It's supposed to be about the people that we develop. And uh, in the video that we just saw, I just wanted to kind of give a little update of that video, that uh, that video was actually taken about mm, maybe five years ago or so. But since then, we have done so much more work with the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Uh, one of our big, big uh, issues that we're, we're working on right currently is the whole I issue of education. Uh, and you know, I know a lot of us heard the word drop, uh, push, there were a lot of dropouts and among the Latino children, these dropouts. Uh, but you know what we found out? 
They were dropouts, they were pushouts. They were pushouts. These school districts throughout the state of California, and I might say throughout the United States of America, because the same thing is happening in the Southwest, same thing is happening in Chicago and all these other places, that school, district, school districts are pushing children, African American kids, Latino children, poor white kids out, out of the school system. And we found this out with our organizing. Had we not been out there with the community, we never would have known that this was happening to our children. As a result of that, we have sued the Kern High School District in Bakersfield, California, the largest school district in the state, 70,000 students. We have sued them because of the expulsion and suspension of children of color. And when we started this campaign, people said to us, well, go talk to the board members of the school district. And we said, uh-uh, this is not the way that we work. And again, according to Fred Ross's teachings, you start with the people. And so we started having house meetings with the, uh, with, with the people themselves. And most of these are farm workers. You know, they're uh, recent immigrants, first generation immigrants. And our first, and then we did this whole series of house meetings, the way that Fred Ross taught us how to, how to organize. So our first parent conference that we had, we had 155 parents, 155 parents. And then they told us what was going on. And from those parents, we were able to get 40 of them and start training them how to, how to defend their children in these disciplinary hearings and suspension hearings because, because they couldn't speak English, they would just have them sign a paper, and before they knew that, their kids were kicked out of school for a year at a time. You know, no way the kids could ever get back. And this is what they call the school to prison pipeline. The school to prison pipeline. And it's going on everywhere. It's going on everywhere, throughout the state of California, throughout the Southwest, everywhere. And, and guess what? This is why our prison system is growing because these kids are all going to prison. And, but there's a way to stop it, right? And we have to start from the bottom. Well, this is kind of like one of the first steps that we have to do. And of course, let me, let me back up on that. We're doing other things too. We're doing work, a work on the health and nutrition, getting all of the sodas and the sweet beverages out of all of the school districts, okay? <laughs> getting them out completely. Uh, uh, last weekend, there was, there was a Cumbia ride, but we had 70 people in one community riding bicycles, okay? And the rest of the people walking with them. Uh, you know, we want them to do more physical activity. We have an epidemic of diabetes in our community, and we want to see how we can end that one also. Uh, but I think one of the most important things that we're doing is on what we call civic education. You know, getting our people involved in voting getting our people involved in voting. Uh, you saw there uh, in the video that where we had that water board that was trying to really double people's uh, water rates. Guess what, they're not there anymore. They have been replaced because we have a majority of our residents on that water board. <laughs> so we have uh, a majority of our residents on the Arvin City Council and they're under the age of 25 years old. <laughs> And uh, we have a majority on the recreation board. These are the little towns out there, Lamont, Arvin, Weed Patch, right? And we have now members on four different school boards. Now, the Bakersfield, unfortunately, the, Baker, the Bakersfield High School Board that we're suing is controlled by Tea Party people. And uh, it's gonna be very hard to get them out, but that's another lawsuit that we're working on. And it's, it's called a lawsuit to stop the gerrymandering. Because they, the school board members there uh, at, the, at the Kern High School District, they all live within five miles of each other. Okay, so that's another lawsuit, so that we have to change that in order to, to be able to change uh, the, the, the Kern High School Board. So, but the, the beautiful thing about, you know, when I talk about these people being elected, we're a nonprofit organization. But once they learn how to do the work of going out there and getting the petitions, uh, like one of the petitions that they got, they, they actually, in Weed Patch, th by the way, this is where the Grapes of Wrath was filmed. And the place still looks kind of the same as when John Steinbeck was there and wrote his book. But uh, the, the, the people in Weed Patch, they actually passed a bond issue uh, so that they could build a brand new gymnasium for their middle school a brand new gymnasium. So once they learn how to do that work, they get out there, uh, they get the petitions, they register the people to vote, they get the people out to vote, you know? 
and this is the way that they've been able to win these, win these elections. And so now they're getting themselves elected to office. Isn't that great? They learn how to do the work and they get the... <laughs> and so we're trying to set up like this permanent voting structure so that when every neighborhood you know, we have captains out there in every single neighborhood so they will make sure that people are registered, uh, so that people have their absentee ballot, you know, make sure that people, uh, if they're eligible, eligible for citizenship, that they become citizens, and then hopefully when election day comes, we, we will, you know, be able to win it, you know, be able to win a progressive agenda. And I think that is so important because, as you know, I should add one more thing. We're also part of a group, a group called California Calls that starts all the way from San Diego to San Francisco. And we have a different, what we call anchor organizations. These are nonprofit organizations with labor unions like SCIU, uh, the teachers unions, et cetera. And uh, we work on these big issues like Proposition 30. Everybody remember Proposition 30 here? Remember when we passed that, uh, uh, that proposition that uh, millionaires had to pay higher taxes? Remember that one? And, and the, by the way, that's going to be on the ballot for 2016, uh, so we can vote, because that brought in over $8 billion, excuse me, $6 billion into our state revenues to go for education. And that's going to be on the ballot again in 2016. And we did it, okay? All of us have voted in those elections. So uh, you, I, I think that we do have like a crisis in our society right now. We have so many issues that we probably can't talk about all of them right now because we'll be here all night. You know? But the thing is that we know that we've got to really uh, do what we did, we did back in the 60s. And I know a lot of people tell me, okay, man, you're, you know, you're 85 years old, why don't you retire? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you spend time with your grandchildren? I brought two of them with me tonight, by the way. They're here. <laughs> yeah. you know, so we don't, uh, we don't, we really don't have the luxury, I think, of retiring. You know, we've got to keep on organizing uh, because when we see what's happening, when we see the people that are running uh, for office right now, and I'd like to say that I'm sure that Mr. Donald Trump, that today when he ate, and all, uh, all those other Republican candidates that are attacking immigrants, their food was picked by an undocumented Mexican somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably right here in Watsonville or Santa Cruz or Salinas, right? Yeah, their food is paid by some. So, uh, but I think the scary thing is we think of, well, is it possible that one of these guys could win? You know, is it possible? I mean, how many of us thought that George Bush would be elected to a second term, you know? It happened, right? It happened. And so I think it's really imperative upon all of us that, like myself, I hope that people, you know, don't think that we can take it easy now. And uh, many people here in this area here, in the Bay Area, Northern California, we have it so much better than other people. I, I've been traveling in the last three weeks, I've been on the road, and things are so bad. I cannot tell you how bad they are. In places like, I was in Texas. In Texas where they have closed all these clinics for women, where they can get their health services, where they try, have to travel hundreds of miles now, or pay exorbitant amounts of money, you know. I mean, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, to get the kind of health care that they need. It is really terrible. I was in North Carolina. In North Carolina, they just passed an anti-immigrant bill so that the people who were undocumented cannot use the IDs, the identification cards, from their own governments. They call them the matriculas. Here in California, uh, for the last 10 years, people can open up a bank account or, or, or utilities. Uh, they can do that with their identification cards. With it, or North, Carolina, North Carolina, you can't do that. And so, you know, uh, well, Kit, uh, Kit I call him Kid Brick, I'm sorry. I still remember his union name. But he was telling me about what's happened in South Dakota, right? Where they are actually taking uh, Native American children, right? And putting them into these, forcing them into these schools. And uh, that the government actually pays the school system for taking these children out of their homes. So we look, and then again, we think of the numbers of, pe numbers of people that we have in jail uh, in California and throughout, throughout the United States. When you think about all of these things that are happening, you know, what does it look like? It looks like fascism, right? You know, and people forget that Hitler was elected to office, right? Hitler was elected to office. And you think of all of these attacks on, uh, again, on immigrants and, and demeaning the way that Hitler demeaned the Jewish people, right? And that ended up in the Holocaust. And so I think it's all very, very scary. 
I don't know if you heard about it, uh, the Pentagon that just spent millions and millions of dollars, in, including giving money to the NFL uh, uh, to promote patriotism. To promote patriotism. I mean, this is scary, scary stuff. And, and I, I don't think I'm being an alarmist because when we look, we wonder, how did all this happen? You know, when we know that there's big, big campaigns going on in the Los Angeles Times, November the 5th, that one of the billionaires down there, Eli Broad, said they are going to uh, have a campaign uh, to have 50% of the schools in Los Angeles to be charter schools. Char so what does that mean? That means that they want all of that money, right? They want all of that money, all of the public money, like the Kern High School District, their budget is half a million dollars a year. Half a million dollars a year, you know? So they want all of our tax dollars to go into their pockets. And kids are not gonna get a quality education regardless of what people say. Kids that go to charter schools are very self-selected. A lot of the kids are left out, you know, because they wanna look good. And so these are, I think, the issues that are really uh, facing us right now. In addition to, again, and we talk about the candidates out there, you know, they wanna cut Medicare, right? They wanna cut Medi-Cal. Uh, we know that they're defending all of the Planned Parenthood clinics, that's what they wanna do. Uh, in addition, they don't believe that there's climate change. You know, they're in denial, you know? And if we don't protect our planet, I mean, what the heck? All of us are doomed. So anyway, I, so I think that's why, I guess I am so impassioned about organizing. I am so impassioned about organizing because I remember, you know, first of all, when Cesar and I started the union, you know, there was Cesar, his wife Helen, myself, and then it grew to more people. I remember, too, when we sent farm workers out on the boycott and volunteers, there was just a few of them that went out there, right? But they were able to get, what, 17 million people to stop eating grapes? You know, 17 million people. So we know that organizing works. We know that organizing works. And that you have, can have one organizer that can actually organize a couple of hundred volunteers. Because when we talk about all the work that's been done uh, with the United Farm Workers, the work that we did with the Dolores Worth Foundation, it's all done by volunteers. So we get one organizer, that organizer can really organize a whole community. You know, and somebody said this earlier, one of, one of our volunteers who's with us, Yolanda Serena, she said, what do we do when we organize? We grow activists, right? We grow activists, we grow organizers, we, you know, we grow leadership, this is what it's all about. It's growing leadership, and I know that we can do this, okay? But we just have to get the resources to be able to make it happen. And hopefully, if we can keep on organizing, then we can confront some of these issues and make sure, again, that people vote. Make sure that people vote. Yeah. And I'm gonna kind of uh, make this a little bit short, but because I've been kind of lecturing all day today, but one of the things, two of the things that I just wanna kind of close with a couple of chants, and one of them is uh, that to end racism, to end racism, uh, which again we know is destroying so many people's lives and so many crazy things that's happened just because people have a different color of skin, which is ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. So I like to always remind everybody, what is the scientific name of our human race? Homo sapiens, right? And where did our human race begin? Africa, right? And our human race went across the planet, you know? From Africa, we went to Asia, and then we came down to the Bering Strait to the Americas, and we lost some of our color. We got lighter in skin. And one of our tribes got, got lost, and they went way up north where it's very, very cold, and totally, totally, you know, lost their color. And so now, you have to go to the beach or the tanning salon to get your color back. <laughs> And so since we all, originally, you know, our human race came from Africa, that means that we are all Africans, okay? We're all Africans of different shades and colors. Now, so we can say to the KKK and the White Citizens Councils and those members of the Tea Party, you know who you are, and those members of the R Party, you know who you are, Get over it, you're Africans, okay? Just get over it, just get over it, okay? So, 
we can remember that we are all one human family. We're all one human family and that we have to protect each other and we have to fight for each other. And we have to, you know, make sure we get people elected to school boards so we can start teaching ethnic studies from kindergarten, you know, all the way. They don't have to wait to go to college to, you know, to take uh, black studies or Chicano studies from the time that they're little kids. So I want to ask some of you who, you know, maybe are semi-retired or retired, or maybe you're not retired, please run for those school boards, okay? So we can start getting uh, labor studies and ethnic studies and women's studies and LGBT studies also, so we can end all of this, uh, you know, terrible discrimination that we have against different groups, okay? We can do it, but we have to organize to make it happen, okay? Then, so I'm gonna share a word with you, and then I was, I'm gonna share a couple of other words with you later, a couple of chants, but one of them, I just, uh, this is again to remind us that we are one human race, we're one human family, and the word is wozani. Could you say that word, wozani? wozani? So I'm gonna say one, two, three, and we're all gonna shout wozani together, all right? One, two, three, wozani. wozani. All right, you got that one really, really good. I love that, I love that. So, uh, and, and that's one, the one other uh, chat that I wanna do with you, uh, because I think we have to work so hard. And those of you that have relatives in other in other states, you know, call them also. Become an organizer. We have to be kind of become the missionaries because we are all, I guess, as Reverend D you might say, we're all saved, right? Can I use that word, Reverend D? We're all kind of saved, you know? We know what we have to do and we have the knowledge, but if we have the knowledge and we don't do anything with it, actually we're adding to the problem, you know? So we've got to kind of become the missionaries. We've got to become the organizers. Uh, you know, we, in the union we used to have uh, that, uh, that kind of a, a chant, we said every member is an organizer, right? Every member is an orga organizer. So every one of us that really cares about our country, that really cares about democracy, when we know they're trying to su suppress de democracy, you know, Governor Christie uh, just signed a bill to suppress, uh, uh, to suppress voting in, in the state of, of New Jersey where he's at. So these, these people are, I mean, they're vicious. They know what they're doing. And we, you know, we hear about it, and, and we maybe wring our hands, but we've got to do something about it, right? We've got to do something about it. So everybody, I just want to ask all of you to become missionaries, to go out there, talk to your neighbors, uh, talk to your friends, and just remind them that we've got to become more involved uh, to make sure uh, that we can keep a democracy in our country. And to help us, um, not only my, my own organization, I was talking about growing, uh, growing leaders. I was out at the community garden this morning uh, that they are trying to uh, you know, do away with part of that garden and we want them to be able to keep it. So all of us here, we can help on that mission uh, to keep the garden that they have here in Santa Cruz, okay? We can, we can make that happen. And you know, and, and to give a little bit of our time, you know, we can give an hour, you know, if there's a, a union out there that's doing something, uh, give a little bit more time. Uh, give our time for organizing campaigns. My goodness. And I'm sure I know many of you here have, al have already done this. Like I said, I'm preaching to the choir. But get somebody that you know that has not been, been involved, get them involved. Uh, you know, get them involved in campaigns so they learn how to do uh, the election work that we need to do. Because we need to have an electoral revolution in this country. And so many people don't vote. So many people don't vote. And I think that's the way that we can make it. And yes, please run for office, okay? And then we have to work for public campaign uh, reform so that you don't have to be a millionaire because we know that the only way that we can combat people like the Koch brothers, these guys that have $40 billion and that are gonna be spending tons, they're gonna spend millions of dollars in the Latino community to try to encourage them to vote for somebody who might have a Latino last name, like Rubio or Cruz, right? Or somebody who speaks Spanish like Jeb, you know? Uh, to try to confuse them and to get them to vote for their party. And so we've gotta get out there and let them know, and it's sad how many people are saying that they just don't vote. So we've gotta change that, you know? We've gotta change that. And I, I just wanna help you, I mean, thank you for, uh, for being here because I think all of us together, we can make it happen. <laughs> Oh, my God. 